So what I want to talk about first of all is foundations, how you choose colours. Um, this information is going to be great for both professional makeup artists but for doing makeup on yourself. So all you need to remember is this, with foundations they normally come in two colour families, cool and warm. Cool meaning pinky undertones and one warm which is sort of neutral more yellow undertones. I never ever use anything with a cool undertone, ever 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 unless I'm dealing with skins that are like Kelly Rowland, um, I look after her at times, her shade or darker. Yes, you can have cool and warm skin. For example, I'm what they call a cool skin tone. I have a pink undertone. If I walked to a makeup counter and someone who wasn't as trained or as skilled would definitely sell me a cool foundation. The problem with cool foundations is they photograph, I'd say, two to three shades paler than what they look, especially when you put flash on a camera. The problem is that if you put a cool skin tone on a cool skin, they can look really ashy, goth, a little bit deathly looking. I'll give you another example, Nicole Kidman, she's a perfect example, she's very pale like me, very pink in skin tone, but her makeup artist has told me they love to use Giorgio Armani number no. two, which is a yellow foundation. So, when you put a warm foundation on a cool skin like me, you just take out the redness and you get left with a beautiful milky skin. All you need to do when you match your foundation, the place that I match is on the decolletage area. The reason that I do not do jawline, I do not do on the face, I always do this area here. The reason is, you do someone's makeup, I find this, especially if you're doing a wedding or a special event, the, the bride or the model sits with you with a shirt like this, you match a jawline, you do this fantastic foundation, she gets dressed, puts a singlet shirt on, and for some reason drinks some champagne, and I don't know what happens, ladies, but when we drink champagne, we tend to like this move, which is shoulder to chin, and there's five shades difference in color. So you must match your foundation to your body color. If you fake tan, you make skin tone darker. So one thing I'd love you to do, there's an app we're gonna put a link to called Match My Makeup. It's a fantastic website, um, and what it is, if you love a color, say in Ellis Fast, you know your shade, but you wanna try a Dior, it, the calibration they do, the accuracy is incredible. You put in your foundation and it will give you the exact color in another brand. So I'll put a link up for that, match my makeup. When I do a base, you make two decisions. One, what coverage do I want? What coverage do I want on the skin? Light, medium, high, maximum. Then, what reflection do I want that skin to have? Do I want the skin to be velvety, matte, powdery, glossy, shiny, metallic, okay? So it's not about just doing one, one trick pony. Powder, I get asked this question all the time. Does powder make your makeup last longer? Should you set? I would use powder, and I've got two of my assistants in the room who can vouch for this. Um, I'm lucky to use powder once a month. I use powder purely if I want the skin to look more velvety. The best foundation is not about how long something lasts, it's about how good does it look, and then what maintenance is involved. And if you're sitting here going, I do brides, how do I make it last all day? We will touch on that. But if you are doing a trial on someone, if you're a makeup artist out there, here's my favorite trick. When you do a trial on a bride, you get them to, or anyone, you get them to come to your house at a time where they've had makeup on their face for a couple of hours. It does two things. One, it tells me so much about their taste, what they like. Secondly, I get to see what makeup looks like four to five hours after I've applied it. And most times, the faces, if I got 100 women, put their makeup on, came back four hours later, I would say five might be really oily. Most women's skin don't change that much, so we don't have to panic about making things last. Just create the skin that you love and learn to maintain it. Okay, so there's a lot more to get through. I'm gonna pull up my first model. There's a lot to absorb. Don't worry if I go too fast. That's the great thing about this. You can pause it, play it, go back over. Okay, so the reason she's got a few things happening on her, what I would like you all to do, if you're going to test foundations, this is what I do. Foundations, you never get to see what they really truly do, I believe, till they're on the skin for at least 20 minutes to half an hour because heat changes everything. I've gone and put like six swatches of different colors, different foundations, and I've just let them sit on her skin. And I've let them there to see what happens. And this is the thing, if you're worried, does that foundation make my skin oilier, drier? All these questions you have, it's really simple. When you go foundation, or if you've got at home and you've got six different types, go home and put every single one you have on a thick, 
stripe on the back of your hand and come back 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour later. And what you'll find is half of them will be shinier and waxier because they're like an oil and with heat they've gone oilier. So yes, that will make your skin look oilier, great for dry skin. The other half, it's gonna be completely matte. So the moisture is not, your skin might be really dry. Um, it doesn't have a lot of oils. And what happens is, like I've got a couple of those happening here. What happens is that these are great for skin that you want to look matte or if you've got really oily skin, they're fantastic. This little one's oiled up a little bit. And then you have some that don't do anything. They just stay the same. So you just have to make a decision. Do I want my skin to look creamier, shiny, more hydrated? Do I not want to change the texture of my skin at all? Or do I want to have my skin quite matte? Okay. So let's just, we'll go back a bit. We'll take it from scratch. We'll keep it nice and simple. What I've done, she has, Jasmine, has quite dry skin. So there's a couple of things that I like to do. If you've got a dry skin, a peeling skin, a skin that's just quite dry, but it's flaky is your number one enemy, go and get it's dermatological, put a link, it's a pre-cleanse oil. It's an oil you put on, I use this all the time, and it's got this awesome little matte thing, which is, I've taken it out. Um, it's like a little exfoliant glove, and you put the oil on, it soaks in the dry skin, we do a bit of a buff, we rinse it off, we come back, and we start to do our makeup. This is also Avene, is on the psoriasis and eczema foundation, as one that they recommend. This is the thickest, one of the strongest moisturizers you'll ever use. If I've got a really dry skin, I'll just drown the face in it, let it sit for 10 minutes, do other things while I set up, come back, take the excess off. Or if you're doing your own makeup seriously, put this on before you go to bed the next day. Oh, hydration. Sorry, this is really dirty. Um, this is an Avene mask. And what I did before, just so you can see what I've done, is if I'm in a hurry and I've got to set things up, but my model's sitting there waiting with this dry skin, I'll get this Ava a mask and I'll just throw it on, do what I need to do, come back, voila, she's hydrated. If in doubt, people, what you're better off doing is putting a lot of moisturizer on the skin, just too much. And then when you start makeup, just take the excess off. Okay, so let's go from the very beginning, how do I do this process?